Eddie Hearn didn't hold back, saying no one wants to see a legend like Mike Tyson stuck in quicksand. His remarks sparked a heated debate about whether the fight was a celebration of Tyson's legacy or a spectacle that pushed the limits of respect for the sport. I, lo I love boxing. I don't want to see Mike Tyson stuck in quicksand. Like, and he showed unbelievable heart, by the way. No one wants to see that happening to Mike Tyson. Hearn further reflected on how the fight drew massive crowds and attention, but admitted it wasn't something he could enjoy. He highlighted the contrast between the entertainment value for casual fans and the discomfort it brought to purists who respect the sport's legacy. I watched the first 30 seconds, which were quite entertaining, and then after it was just horrible to watch. And, and that's, I just, like, did you enjoy watching most of that fight? The back, like, it, it was hard to watch, and but it was always gonna be like that. But it doesn't have to be, they're not making this for me. Look how many people turned up. Look how many people tuned in, so I can't knock it. It's just not for me, and there's no, that's not disrespectful. Hearn later criticized the fight's setup, pointing out that the use of 14 ounce gloves and Tyson's initial burst of energy were clear signs the bout wasn't a true contest. He acknowledged Tyson's legendary status and his display of heart, but firmly stated that such fights aren't necessary for someone of Tyson's caliber. But they've got pillows on, they've got 14 ounce gloves on. You know, I mean, he come out like a, a raging bull, but after that, he was gassed. But Mike's a legend and he's got, he shows a load of heart, but you just don't need to see it, man. As the fight stretched over eight two-minute rounds, with both fighters cautiously pacing the ring and exchanging occasional punches. Despite Tyson's efforts, Jake Paul dominated with ease, earning unanimous approval from the judges. However, the match left many fans disappointed, feeling it lacked the excitement they had hoped for. Watching a 58-year-old Tyson struggle with the physical demands of the ring against a younger opponent like Paul sparked mixed emotions. With many questioning the legitimacy of such a matchup and its impact on boxing, Ryan Gar Garcia tweeted, no point of that fight. Terrence Crawford tweeted, I love Mike Tyson, but they giving him too much credit. He looked like trash. To train that long and only throw 97 punches, the whole fight is crazy. I'm just glad he didn't hurt out there. You will forever be a legend. Rather, you like it or not, and it will never be another one. And I understand you so well. All this don't mean nothing. Gervonta Tank Davis said, to the bozo that shared the ring with Mike, you a whole bozo for this, and you didn't get the job done, head. One more thing, I'ma beat the brakes off Jake when I catch him. Uppercut, jab, jab, left hook, uppercut, hook, watch. Gervonta posted, ding, ding, school and bitch. KSI posted, what a sad watch. Whole thing was sad. Mike is twice the age of Jake Paul FFS. It was never ever gonna be close. I can't believe that this elderly abuse was even sanctioned. Just a disgusting. Derek James said, But do you think that we saw Jake Paul going all out like he normally does? I don't know, I never seen him fight before. <laughs> okay. Colby Covington said, Should've, uh, what did I think? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I love seeing Mike out there doing what he loves to do. It's his passion. But uh, I don't know. I think Jake looked a little soft tonight. He don't look like a real boxer, a pro boxer that's been training the last 10 years. So, you know, he needs to come see me one day. A guy that's in his prime that, that's going to walk him down and have that cardio. So, I did, yeah. I thought, you know, Mike's a little bit older. You know, he's, he, he had a problem. You know, they had to push back the first fight because, you know, he had like a stroke on a plane or something like that. Yeah. So, also, and he, I was just scared. I didn't want to see Mike get hurt. I'm, I'm happy he's walking out of that ring and he's healthy tonight. So, super happy. Everything went well. And, uh, you know, it was a spectacle. All the fans enjoyed the show. Yeah, hell yeah, I'd love to fight him. He's talked a lot of shit about me in the past. I'd love to see him back it up. Mm -hmm. For sure, I'm definitely, that's all I've been practicing the last couple of years, just straight boxing, man, boxing and wrestling. So I know I can mix up the hands and, and implement that Tyson Fury style where I really just drag on you, I, I wear on you, and I just get in the clinch and dirty box and just put the pressure on. No one can keep up with me. That's why they call me the cardio king. Just pressure, you know, get him tired. Look, he don't like to fight in the pocket. He likes to sit back, sit back, one, two. You know, he sit back, one, two, one, two. That's all he's got. He ain't got shit, a little bit of a hook. But I walk him down, I get in the pocket, I wear on him, I dirty box him, and I finish him inside eight for sure. Zab Judah said. 68, 58 years old, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know what I'm saying? But then, record Jake Paul, they shout out to Jake Paul, man, but just going in there and just playing skills. He didn't just play no YouTuber skills tonight. He just played boxing and just playing the game. 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 Just I love him regardless. You know, listen, he did, he did great. Job, what was the thoughts going through your head whenever you watched him in there, though? 
Was it a little bit disappointing? Was it a No, no, it was no disappointment. Amber said, I knew Jake Paul was going to win. I felt it in my heart, just yeah. like I knew Trump was going to win. I just knew it. <laughs> what, what, I felt it. What made you know that? Yeah, what made you know that? I just, you know, he's 27 years old. He's been working hard. And, you know, I just saw it. I watched the progression of who he is as a boxer. And I was the only one I was cheering when everyone else was booing him. That's my dog. I just, I just knew it. I felt it. But before this shocker, most pre-fight opinions heavily lean towards Tyson's dominance, making the outcome all the more surprising. Here are some of the reactions from boxing pros that added to the intense anticipation before the fight. Teddy Atlas highlighted Tyson's quick twitch muscles and raw power, traits that remain extraordinary even at his age. However, he cautioned that while Tyson still possesses these abilities, they may not translate effectively in a competitive arena. Atlas reminded fans that Tyson, though still dangerous, is far removed from his prime. When you were an athlete at that level that Tyson was, you know, the reason he looks so good on the pads is because he still has those quick twitch muscles. He still has that power. He still has those abilities that an average person will never have. You know, even at that age, it doesn't mean that he can use them in the arena he used to use them in, or at that level, of course not. But he still has them at a higher level than, than, than people would ever imagine. Atlas further pointed out that Tyson could be very dangerous in the first two rounds if the fight is legitimate. He acknowledged Tyson's potential for a quick knockout, but admitted uncertainty about the fight's authenticity, adding that fans should prepare for anything. He still, when you watch the tapes, you see he still has power. He still has speed. I would just tell you this, if it's legitimate, I don't know if it is. I don't know if they made a deal or if it's real. But if it's real, we're going to trust, let's say it's real. I don't know how we would know that, but say we, it's real. If it is, and they're going to legitimately go at it, for the first two rounds, Tyson's dangerous. Are you kidding me? He's dangerous. Atlas also explained that promotional videos of Tyson showcased him in a positive light, but he urged caution. He noted that these clips are designed to make him look good and don't reveal the full picture of his readiness. While Tyson's initial burst of energy could be threatening, it may not last long. And they look good. They, they're supposed to look good. That's why they put them out. They wouldn't put them out if they didn't look good. But, and I'm not pouring water on it. It's nothing. No, I'm a pro. It's, it's not this, it's not that, it's sour grapes. Uh, that's stupid if people say that about me at this point in my life. Really, no. Atlas further praised Tyson's legendary status and defended his right to make money through such fights. He also called the bout a historic moment being streamed on Netflix for the first time. If the fight ended early, Atlas predicted Tyson had a real chance of securing a knockout. Tyson's tremendous, he deserves to make money. It's a money grab. Hey, there's plenty of money grabs out there. They, they, they just, they, they, they earned the right to do it. If people are gonna buy it, they earned the right to do it. They're gonna make money. It's, it's, it's a pioneer move. It's on Netflix. Uh, first time a fight on Netflix. All of that stuff, right? All that, that jazz. If it's, if it's legit. Tyson could knock him out in the first round. Jim Lampley also weighed in this fight and reflected on his long-standing friendship with Tyson, expressed his hope that the legend comes out of the fight healthy and financially stable. He fondly recalled the early days of Tyson's career and wished him well, though he remained cautious about the risks. Uh, I, I hope that Mike makes a lot of money. He's a, a dear and old friend. My television boxing career began calling his first several exposures on ABC Sports back in the 80s. I've known him a long time. I love him. Um, I want his life to be what he wants it to be. And uh, so I hope that Mike uh, does well in the business of the fight and doesn't get hurt. Lampley also raised concerns about Tyson's decision to return to the ring at 57, warning that even a well-trained Jake Paul could pose a significant danger. He worried that Tyson was putting himself at unnecessary risk, regardless of Paul's relative inexperience in the sport. Obviously, when a man is 57, almost 58 years old, going into the ring, I don't care who the opponent is. The opponent could be a, a figure skater. He's still taking a chance. And so I think that Mike is taking a chance uh, with this because Jake Paul will train, Jake Paul will lift weights, Jake Paul, Jake Paul will get himself into shape to do the best that he can possibly do and try to land one big shot uh, and, uh, and separate Mike from his senses 
long enough to get uh, a win. Highlighting the drama of the matchup, Lampley questioned whether Tyson's energy and commitment would carry him through, or if Paul's youth would overwhelm the veteran. He hoped Tyson would end the fight unscathed, both physically and financially. The essence of the drama is, is Jake Paul going to knock Mike out, or is Mike going to uh, go through the necessary motions and show enough energy and commitment over the course of however many rounds it takes to gradually beat down Jake Paul and get a win. And I hope that Mike comes out of it healthy and wealthier. Lampley was critical of the age gap between the fighters, calling it a significant risk for Tyson. While acknowledging Paul's lack of refined boxing skills, he emphasized that Tyson's advanced age made this fight particularly dangerous. The age difference is big enough that the event is dangerous. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I, I kind of wish that Mike had found some other way to do business rather than to um, fight somebody who's Jake's age and has a chance to get in the kind of shape that Jake might get into. But he's still, he's still a far, far uh, piece removed from understanding boxing and having the kind of refined skills that Mike had at his peak. Lampley also admitted he wouldn't watch the fight, labeling it a freak show. Despite his love for Tyson, he found the matchup to be more of a spectacle than a legitimate competition, underscoring the dangers of such events. Again, the question is, how much of Mike do you get to see when he's 57 years old? Um, I mean, again, I love him, I'm rooting for him, I'm not going to make the buy. It's not an event that I want to see. It's too much of a distortion. It's not competition. It's a freak show. De La Hoya also expressed his concern over this fight. He stated that he believed Tyson had the upper hand in the first few rounds, predicting a quick finish if the legend capitalized on his explosive start. However, he warned that Jake Paul's youth, speed, and intelligence could shift the fight's momentum after the fourth round. I hear Mike Tyson's in tremendous shape. I hear Jake Paul, I mean, he's looking yoked and big and strong. We will see. I give Mike Tyson the first two, three rounds. If he can take him out, it's sayonara for Jake Paul. But if it goes past four, I think Jake Paul, the youth, the speed, the intelligence might take over. So Mike Tyson, good luck. Bob and Weave, give us the vintage Tyson, baby. Eddie Hearn also weighed in this fight, and he strongly opposed the idea of Tyson returning to the ring, calling it a decision that lacked emotional consideration for the legend. While he praised Paul's strength, Hearn found it difficult to justify putting Tyson in such a potentially humiliating position. 20 years ago, Mike Tyson retired from boxing, shot to pieces, right? I mean, completely shot. 20 years on, having been shot 20 years ago, is fighting. If, if anyone thinks that Mike Tyson should be in the ring at this age, you either have absolutely no emotional feelings toward that man or you're an idiot. And listen, God bless him, he's a legend, one of my favorite ever fighters, but I'm not gonna lie to you, shouldn't be happening. Highlighting Jake Paul's physical strength and youthful vigor, Hearn warned that Tyson's legendary status might not protect him from being outmatched. He questioned why fans wanted to see such a mismatch, calling it a reflection of today's spectacle-driven culture. The young man. Jake's a strong young man. He's very limited as a boxer, but he's strong and he can punch and he's in his prime. Do you know what I mean? Why do you want to see Mike Tyson, one of the greatest legends of all time in the sport, get punched around the ring by Jake Paul? Now it's the world we live in. Hearn acknowledged Tyson's enduring punching ability, but reiterated his opposition to the fight. He felt that Tyson's legacy as a legend didn't need this type of bout, expressing sadness over what he saw as unnecessary risk taking. I'm sure Mike Pot Tyson can still punch, and Jake Paul. Maybe that's it, the heart of me to say, kind of being. Uh, but I just Mike don't want to see. Yeah, but I just don't. Listen, I just don't want to sit. I don't want to see Mike Tyson in the ring. I sat next to him in, in the Riyadh season event. He's an all-time great, a legend, great man. But we don't need to, you know, it's not something we need to see. Shane Mosley also weighed in and praised Tyson's raw punching power, warning that Jake Paul would face a tough challenge despite his hard training. However, Mosley admitted that the fight was unpredictable, given Paul's dedication to his preparation. For me, I see Mike Tyson being a very hard puncher, and I, just, I was like, the Jake is, is going to be kind of difficult for Jake to do anything, but. You never know. I mean, if there's some kind of circumstantial thing where Mike Tyson's not training the way he's supposed to, or something's wrong, maybe clips on the chin, something could happen. But for me, I can't see 
you know, that happening where, you know, Jake does it, but it can't because he trains hard, has a great team, and things can happen. That's what, that's why we want. That's why everybody wants to see to see what happens. We, we don't know, right? I know that in his in Tyson's prime, it would or anywhere if he was forty years old, it wouldn't happen, right? <laughs> but I mean, he, he's damn near sixty now, so I mean, you know, we, we don't know. Tyron Woodley also expressed his opinion over this fight and described the fight as even due to Tyson's age. He reminded fans of Tyson's dominance in his prime, but acknowledged that his advanced age levels the playing field. In his prime, Woodley said the fight would have been a mismatch. Very even fight, to be honest. And it's even because of the age of Mike Tyson and this in this even. Uh, okay. I think it's an even fight because of the age of Mike Tyson. He's completely obviously out of his prime. When in his prime, um, most of his fights were almost attempted murder. So literally, Jake would have stood a chance. Nobody would even commission or sanction a fight against him and Mike Tyson. Woodley pointed out Jake Paul's advantageous position, where a win would elevate him and a loss could still be framed as a courageous effort. Paul's always in a win-win situation, he said, expressing interest in attending the fight. And Jake's always on a win-win situation. He's fighting guys that if he lose, you lost to this guy, you lost to Tyree, you lost to Anderson Silva, you lost to Nick Diaz or Nate Diaz or okay. whatever. So he's always in a position where if he wins, he goes up. If he loses, it's like, okay, he took a risk, he took a chance. So I like the fight, I'll be at the fight. Carl Frosch also weighed in this fight and criticized Jake Paul's skills, calling him an amateur with no real boxing ability. However, he conceded that Paul's youth and fitness could give him an edge against an aging Tyson, whose prime years are long behind him. I've, I've said it many times before, Jake Paul cannot box. He's not a pugilist, he, he, he swings away, he's absolutely, useless but he's a young man what is he 27 years yes. old he's around his, his mid-20s just he's like he's in his prime pretty much as a man and he's training every day and he, he's he's fit and he's strong because of the fact that he's in the gym so, and because he's young now so as he well can... Frotch lamented Tyson's return to the ring asserting that age and wear had taken their toll he doubted Tyson could handle the physical demands of a fight against someone younger and fresher even if that opponent lacked polished skills can't box if he goes in against a professional fight. We've seen what happened. He lost. He lost Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury is area level, yeah. which means he wouldn't win a British title yeah. right now. And he beat Jake Paul, who's now going to say, "Oh, I beat Mike Tyson." I think he beats Mike Tyson. I think he's going to be too young, fit, and fresh. Father time waits for no one, as I've said before. Mm -hmm. Mike Tyson will be 58 years old by the time he steps in the ring. He retired in his 40s, early 40s, and that was too late for yeah. retirement. He boxed on far too long. Frotch suggested that contractual clauses might limit Tyson's aggressiveness in the fight. He speculated that Tyson would earn more money by dragging the fight out rather than going for an early finish. He can fight. It wouldn't, everyone would love him to catch Jake Paul clean on the chin in yeah. round one. But in my opinion, I honestly think that there'll be something in the contract that means he can't go for it in round one or round two. And if the longer the fight goes, oh. the more money he'll get paid. Oh. But if he goes for it and tries to win early doors, he won't get paid. That's allegedly, that's what I've heard, that's the words I've heard around right, the campfire. Okay. The, the contracts are all stitched up. Frotch expressed sadness over Tyson's situation, predicting a one-sided victory for Jake Paul. He called the fight a disgrace, but acknowledged that both fighters stood to make significant money. So listen, I just feel that Mike Tyson, and you, you probably you feel sorry for him, which, you, which you've said, and the reason is because he shouldn't be in there with a young yeah. man. And if he gets knocked out, if he gets badly hurt, or even not even badly hurt, if he just gets KO'd, he's getting KO'd by a geezer who used to be a TikTok dancer who can't box yeah. because he shouldn't be in there. Yeah. And you feel like he's half going to take a dive, half going to take one on the chin for the, for the team, get the old Bunsen burner. And does Mike Tyson really need to be jumping in there with fake poor idiot? To, to make more money. Yeah, no. It's just a shame that it's, it's come to this. Yeah. Frotch imagined a scenario where Tyson could land a knockout punch, but he doubted it would happen. He predicted Paul would win within five rounds, citing Tyson's limited endurance at his age. It'd be absolutely fantastic if Tyson goes in there and puts a whooping up on and lands a couple of shots, and that's probably half the sell. People are going to buy it thinking, oh, what if Mike Tyson catches him? But the reality is, I don't think he's going to be allowed to catch him. I think it's going to be a one sided whooping and Jake Paul's gonna beat him probably in four or five rounds because Mike Tyson will get absolutely knackered and probably fall over 
So what do I think of the fight? I think it's a disgrace. Listen, they're all making money. I've got no, I've got no problem with Jake Paul making money. He's got his teeny bopper demographic audience that buy into his bullshit. Jones praised the fight as a spectacle for fans, contrasting the young lion, Paul, with the old lion, Tyson. He believed Tyson's experience and power would be too much for Paul to handle. I think it's a great, great fight, a uh, great marketing situation as well, because so many people want to see it because of the young lion and the old, old lion, you know? so it's a great situation for them. Uh, a great situation for fans because it gives him an opportunity, it gives Jake a chance with Mike being as old as he is, you feel me? So I think it's a great opportunity for both fighters, but I still think Mike probably is gonna be a little too much for Jake. Jones gave Paul a fighting chance if he could survive the first two rounds. However, he predicted that Tyson's explosiveness in the opening rounds could prove devastating. If he if he can get to the late rounds, yes. If he get to the round four or five, maybe, yeah. But he, gotta get, but he has to get out of the first three rounds. Now you were in there with them, and I think you said after he still has his strength and his power. Still got the power. Still got the power. That's why I say Jake has to get out of the first three rounds. Get past the first three rounds, he got a chance. As the fight unfolded, the clash of generations delivered a spectacle that left fans talking for days. Tyson's ferocity in the early rounds reminded fans of his prime, while Jake Paul's resilience and strategy showcased his growing capabilities. The event became a significant moment in boxing history, blurring the lines between entertainment and sport. Who was your favorite? Did your side win? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos like this.